It is never going to end, is it? The Jimmy Butler saga continues to grow, not by the day, but by the hour as we continue to get new quotes and new information surrounding the idea of where Jimmy Butler is going to be playing next season and how the Miami Heat won't be that team. Let's get to it and break down all the moving parts on this episode of Heat Digest. So let's go and break down the chaos ensuing with Butler and Miami. Now, has any of this information come from Jimmy Butler and his team or the Miami Heat organization? No, but they come from credible ESPN analysts as well as analysts overall and other journalists covering the game of the NBA basketball. So let's get to it and break down first things first. The NBA Central posted this a few days ago. We're not going to read this quote from Howard Brock, and we're going to use the actual quote in its entirety. As you click on the link at the bottom, you, it just there's no way you can't read the entirety of it and take really the information you're looking for. As Howard Brock answers the question in bold at the top, who will be the biggest star to change teams this summer? Howard Beck then goes on to answer with this quote. Jimmy Butler will be traded. Rival executives have been buzzing about it for months. For all the obvious reasons, Butler's about to turn 35 with a lot of hard miles and a lot of injuries, with one year left on his Heat contract and is reportedly seeking a two-year, $113 million extension. If the Heat grant it, they'll, be, they'll have little to no flexibility to add another star, and they absolutely need one. Credit Butler for powering Miami to two finals in five years, but a team built around Butler and Bam Adebayo isn't enough to challenge the Celtics, Bucks, or the Sixers in the East. Pat Riley is known for moving off a high-priced players before they fall off a cliff, and Butler at this stage would be much more valuable as a second or third option on a contender than as the top dog in Miami. This feels like the right time for a pivot. Now, before we move on from this quote from Howard Brock, or excuse me, Howard Beck, not Howard Brock, Howard Beck, we have to acknowledge the fact that this isn't the craziest quote we've broken down. Now, coming out like Alan Hahn did a few days ago when we broke that down in the last video on Heat Digest, and he came out, my, the Jimmy Butler days in Miami are done. They're finished. That was a bit extreme. This one is a bit more sensible in the idea that this is, this is a real possibility. Pat Riley is obviously a large piece of this equation. And with Pat Riley at the helm, if he decides to shop around and see the amount of assets we can get back in return for Jimmy Butler in exchange for a 35 or a player about to turn 35, who still has an enormous amount of value, not only for the production he has on the court, but off the court. Would Pat Riley try to turn that into a slew of different young assets, whether it be draft picks or actual players already in the league? That is a possibility, and to say it is not is a bit ridiculous. And it, I know it's unfortunate to say, because you know how I feel about this. I want to see Jimmy Butler retire with the Miami Heat. I love Jimmy, not only for what he brings on the floor, but off the floor. But again, this is a real possibility, so we can't really shame the idea of Howard Beck when he says this. But again, I'm leaning the other way. Now let's quickly break down Jimmy Butler's stats from this past season and realize what we're losing off, or what we would be losing with productivity on the floor. Butler averaged just under 21 points per game at 20.8 last season. Five rebounds, five assists, 1.3 steals, shooting 49.9% from the field overall. That is ridiculous. If you're averaging, what, 15 or more points in the league or even less than that, and you're shooting 50% from the field, you are doing it at a ridiculous efficiency rate and really just a ridiculous level. First three-point shot, it's falling at a 41.5% clip, which is, again, a great number. Again, if you're at that 40% mark or higher, you are absolutely killing it. Jimmy, obviously, going on that 35 years of age, just around the corner, but again, he shoots 44% on his corner threes, a great number. 80% of his threes are assisted, which is another great stat due to the fact that it means Jimmy Butler is not just simply pulling up off the dribble, shooting long contested three-point shots. It, he's catching the ball, he's shooting it off the catch, and assi get, getting assists for other Miami players. I will say the biggest stat out of everyone listed in front of us is the bottom one. 18% of all shots are threes for a day and time in this NBA season or this time of the NBA really structure that is amazing as many teams many players live and die by the three-point shot Jimmy Butler is clearly not one of those players but he still is extremely efficient in taking those three-point shots and overall just in his game throughout but again that is not even the biggest thing you'd be losing if we were to trade or if anyone were to lose Jimmy Butler due to the fact that what he brings off the floor is even better than what he brings on the floor, due to the fact that his leadership alone is 
almost irreplaceable off the floor and on the floor. He is a leader if I've ever seen one, whether he's in Chicago, in Minnesota, Philly, Miami. He is a great ball player, and he really produces at a very, very high level. I will say one of the biggest flaws in Butler's game is his inability to stay healthy. We saw this glaringly last season as he got injured in the second round of a play-in tournament or the excuse me the first round of the play-in tournament against the Philadelphia 76ers where he sprained his right MCL and we went on without him throughout the entirety of the play in the second round of the play-in tournament and then in the first round of the NBA playoffs where we lost in five games to the Boston Celtics now we know that because Jimmy obviously was our lifeline. When he goes down, everyone knows it. Now, I have this graphic pulled up due to the fact that I just want to highlight how many games played he has throughout the majority of his past seasons. Last season, he played 60 games. He started all 60, obviously. The season before that, he played in 64, which was better than last year. And then the two or three years prior to that, he didn't break 60. So again, this isn't something new for Jimmy Butler. Again, he hasn't played 70 games, but all but two times in his long very long NBA career. He was drafted in 2011-2012, and now we're going into 24-25, the 24-25 NBA season. So again, he has not been around for 70-plus games all but twice in his NBA career. But again, when he does play, you know what you get. If he's able to stay healthy enough to get to the playoffs, he is that guy. Whether you like him or not, he really does turn it up. The stats don't lie. Obviously, I don't have him pull up in front of me, and I do apologize, but his scoring and really every stat that really matters, the important ones, they go up in the playoffs. When it, when it's Jimmy time, it it's Jimmy time, and he makes it clear as day that he's the best player on the court, and we've seen it time after time. Again, this past season, a he was obviously injured. We know that. He was a glaring problem for the Miami due to the fact that he was not there. That's why he was a problem because he wasn't able to participate due to injury and whatever else he may be dealing with. But again, that is the biggest problem here. But again, we can't ridicule the idea that Howard Beck threw out there in the sense that would you trade him for a lump sum of goods due to the fact that he's going on the age of 35? He wants more money. As we all know, after our NBA season officially ended after a Game 5 loss to Boston, he came out less than 24 hours later and made his contract demands. As we all know, he wants that three-year contract to really take him to the age of 38, where he'd be pay being paid very, very well for someone as old as Jimmy Butler is. But again, is it worth paying him that if we cannot then bring in more valuable players to surround him and the rest of this Miami Heat team with? Again, here's his current contract situation. We just finished the 2023-2024 NBA season. We are going into the 24-25 season, which is, the, if you notice, the last year of contract for Jimmy Butler before a player option at the end of the year of 25 and 26. So year of 25, 2025 and 2026. That NBA offseason, Jimmy Butler would then have a player option. This is obviously assuming he does not get a player, or excuse me, a contract extension this offseason. Again, or yeah, or this or next one, but again, that year where he has a player option, we know what that means. He can either accept it and come back to the Miami Heat where he'll be getting paid $52 million for that final year, or he can opt out and test free agency where he can then cause a bidding war amongst teams that find him valuable and that would like to put him on their roster. But again, will we get to that point? Will Miami offer him a contract extension either this offseason or in the next? It's to be determined. We don't know. We have to see what Bam does. Is Bam going to get his extension this offseason, or is he going to try to go out, win a defensive player of the year, an MVP, or make an NBA all-first team in order to be eligible for a Supermax contract next season? Again, that's what I would think Bam would do. That's what I would do if I was Bam out of bio because have all the confidence in the world in yourself. You're one of the best players in the world, and if things work and you can play full year, stay healthy, and the pieces around you can stay healthy, and this Miami team plays well, we can really see Bam Adebayo get some awards, make an NBA first team, and then get ridiculous money and next NBA offseason. But again, that's it's a long ways away, and I can't wait to see how this plays out. But again, let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this idea from Howard Beck. Do you guys think there's some truth to it? Do you think that he's on the right path? Do you think this is the path that the Miami Heat should take and get rid of Butler, get a bunch of different assets back, or do you hold on to him, have him hold on to another year, or two years until that player option comes out, see what Jimmy does then, if he wants to opt in, opt out. It's a lot of moving pieces. I can't wait to see how it plays out. I would not move Jimmy Butler this NBA offseason. I would hold on to him for at least one more year before moving him. 
But again, that's just me. I'm not going to move from that idea. But again, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And that will be it for this episode of Heat Digest. I'll see you on the next one.